It's a special Another hip hop icon Slash producer Haas G Part of the hip hop duo UMC's in the early 90s UMC's won an acclaim For their first single Blue Cheese Number one on the Billboard rap single Soon after the second single won to grow on became billboards number one rap song and number two on billboard rap single big hit magic stick little kim 50 cent i told you i was doing my homework mm. uh, magic stick. Bravo. magic <laughs> stick was featured on 2005 movie king's ransom his production credits through Phantom of the Beat spanned many artists in the hip-hop world, including Sadat X, Raekwon, Inspector Deck, Miss Toy. His respected uh, label work is Def Jam Records, Aftermath Records, Koch Entertainment, Epic Records, Universal. He produced- oh, that's, that's, that's a lot of homework. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I did a little bit of homework this time. Uh, and he did Ghostface Killer, Apollo Kids. I told you I was going to do my homework. Welcome to the SL Digital Media. Ah, uh, well appreciated. Well appreciated. Um, I mean, I don't know if you can hear it, but I'm out in Brooklyn right now, and I got the windows up, so they 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 rocking some bachata driving down the block right now. So, oh well, no, I, I don't really hear it like that. Uh, good, good. Yeah. Um, now I'm here right now. I want to uh, give you thanks about that. Um, on that flyer, that flyer was ill. That um promotional you, flyer that you put up. Um I really appreciated that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But um, yeah, I'm just here, man. We, you know, from the 90s, I'm I'm here right now just to, you know, open up and, and answer, you know, answer the people's questions, you know, answer your questions, let everybody know what they've been dying to hear, you know, give them some some new outlooks on some new things. You know, I'm I'm all ears and I'm about to be all mouth. What's up? Well. I just want to hear how you got started. What made y'all form this group? It's funny because I've been a DJ for years. I haven't DJed in a while, but back then I could tell you, I was one of the ones that actually went out and bought the vinyl. Right. So you remember that, that, that used to be a big thing when you can find that vinyl. Um, and of course it sounded great when you were spinning it um, on that needle. Um, one of the other things I really did like One to Grow On. That was one of my favorite hip hop songs through my, you know, when I was DJing. So I just want to know, man, how did y'all come up with those concepts on them songs? Oh, man. I mean, all right. So we started out, we started out in the late 80s and um, we started to really, really shine when we came out in 91 as the UMCs, you know, prior to that. It was just living the life of, of you know, a hip hopper, you know, um, anywhere from graffiti to break dancing to, you know, just going out to the clubs, trying to be in the limelight under, you know, everybody that was already established, catching up with them. You know, coming from Staten Island, that was a that was a little bit of a task because, you know, we, we had that water between Staten Island and Manhattan. And in order to get on. You had to go where it was popping at. And, you know, Manhattan is where everything was. That that was where everybody met up. That's where all the clubs were. That's where all the record labels were. Yeah. So, you know, we started pursuing, you know, like I said, in the, the late 80s. And um, by 91, we caught our first deal with Wild Pitch Records. And, you know, back then it was a it was a matter of being being creative, you know, you know, no, no two MCs sounded alike. No two groups sounded alike. We all had to just come, you know, to the table with something that was, you know, inventive and new and different. Other than that, you was considered a biter, you know, and you know, we, we couldn't go for that. We didn't want to be biting another group sounded like mm-hmm. them. You know, you're only as good as, as the first, the first, you know, original, you know, other than that, you just a carbon copy. So you're not going to stand out. The first one who did it is the one who's going to get all the accolades. Absolutely. So we um we decided to come with our own style. Uh, nonetheless, they still put us into a category, you know, with Native Tongue, um, De La Soul, Tribe Called Quest, you know, around that time. I guess that's more or less because there was a lot of more conscious fun rap going on. 
And um, we we still fit that mold, but we were coming from Staten Island. So, you know, our, our slang with it was totally different. Um, so, yeah, that's that's basically how we started. You know, Kim and myself, we were the first MCs, first rap group from Staten Island. You know, first group from Staten Island was Force MDs. A lot of y'all, you know, may not know, may know. I don't know. But, um, yeah, first rap group from Staten Island was the UMCs. And, um, yeah, that, that was basically it. You know, we, we spent a lot of time traveling, touring. We had two number one records, uh, one to grow on, and the first one, Blue Cheese. Uh, that set off our careers, you know, in a, in a big, big way. I'm very proud of that. And, uh, you know, if it wasn't for those records right then and there, you know, I mean, our legacy in this music game wouldn't have been started for real. You oh, know, I mean, yeah, that, that goes without saying, you know, y'all, y'all kicked it off and it was, it was great. Those were great rap records though. Like they were great. They weren't regular. It. Yeah, they were great, uh, you know, because like I said, I even used to play the instrumental to one to grow on back then. Right. right. And just the music alone was really, really good, you know. And then y'all styles was coming in back and forth. I mean, y'all definitely are definitely, I would say, iconic with the music that y'all put out because they still play these records still. Oh, yeah, definitely. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, you know, there was a time when you would come out with a record and, you know, around that era, which is considered the golden era of hip hop, those records are timeless. You know, those are, those are records that you throw on today and, and the club will still jump. The club will still bump. You know what I mean? It's, it's a bit of nostalgia, but like I said, it's, it's those are timeless records, you know. You, you, every B and Rock him, every time you throw, you know, um, every B for president on, it's it's timeless. Every time you throw on Slick Rick, you know, the ruler on, it's it's those are records that you can't beat, you can't deny. Um, uh, Rock him, you know what I'm saying? It's it's that's where we come from, an era, you know, of classic hits. And um, like I, I was just having this conversation. A little bit earlier, uh, a few days ago, and records that come out now, I can't remember it right after it's it's played. You know what I mean? From from the first time it's played, I, I can't remember it no more than than there. You know, I, you could wake me up tomorrow playing the same record that I heard yesterday, and I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Because a lot of the records that are out right now are, are really reminiscent of each other. They all sound the same. And, and like I said earlier, that's the difference between when we came out and, and what's going on now is the fact that everybody was individuals. Everybody had their own sound. You know, it was it was it was crazy to be sounded like somebody else. You know, that wasn't respected. But, um, yeah, I, I, I mean, we <laughs> that that we heard the same track for 15 years. You right. Um, uh, and you know, you hitting it dead on the bullseye. You know, you had to be different because that's what made you stand out mm -hmm. in the sound. Right. So I don't understand why do people rap the same way. And now I'm gonna say this: I don't think this is what the people would really pick if they went by sales. Right. You're right. You're right. You sold it. That's why you really went to number one. You really sold it as well as came out. That's a different method they were doing. Now they talking about a stream and, and this, that, and other. But is anybody willing to support it? Me basically thinking on this, you know, I thought about it a lot. And you know, we, we got to come to the conclusion that the masses, the public, you know, they're they're neither here nor there. They're just a bunch of, you know, followers, you know. So whatever we dictate to them is is what's going to be, you know, recognized. That's that's the way they're going to flow. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, who's the one dictating this music? Who's putting this music out? You know what I'm saying? Like at the end of the day, we're not the ones in the high seats who's 
actually, you know, distributing everything. And the ones of us who are in that seat, the ones of us who has hip hop culture and knowledge of what real hip hop is, you know, I, I can't really say that there's many, if any, that are doing a great job in spreading the word about hip hop, the, the real hip hop as we know it. You know, so everything has been commercialized now. Everything has been, you know, you know, patterned and 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 there is complacent right now. It's it's in a it's in an area where, you know, we we don't talk about the the things that we used to talk about when hip hop first started, which was we had our ears to the street, you know, and and hip hop was like a teaching a teaching mechanism. It was a teaching tool. You know, all all the lyrics that really came out of hip hop when it originally started was, you know, inner city youth and kids who who were just spitting, you know, spitting games, spitting, spitting what they learned in the streets. Uh, you know, it it was it was knowledge being shared and and passed around. Nowadays, you know, it, it's just too much of Flash this, flash that, money, 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 shorty, 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 you know, for lack of better words, bitch, 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 um, you know, and and even now we're going through a a, a a time of pandemic and and you know loss of wages and loss of jobs and you know who's out there really celebrating like that right now? We're not in the strip clubs like that right now. We're not even popping bottles like that anymore. You know what I'm saying? But to listen to it in the music and think that, go ahead. No, no, you're right. I'm just saying, yeah, you're right. Um, you know, it's it's really time to get back to some reality. You know, we got to put everything. It's checks and balances right now. You know, everything should be really, really fully observed, and and the plight should be about you know just getting back to the basics and and making sure that people are aware. You know, we've been bamboozled a lot, you know, for a long time. You know what I'm saying? I don't know anybody, you know, in, in my immediate circle who who lives in a mansion, who has yachts. You know, I, I know people that are day to day working, you know, you know, trying to make ends meet. You know what I'm saying? So, of I mean, course. all this glitz and glamour. That's the majority. That's the majority. Yeah. So, you know, but guess what? Society's. You know, they built on that fact that all that glitters is what makes for sales, you know? So, you know, now, I, that's I the that's part, what's happening. I'm going to say this. Now, that's the part that's kind of interesting now, because I don't believe that if they went back to the system that you was in, it would definitely change people minded of the hits mm. it will give them the opportunity to pick their music again i don't believe that it's being picked by the people i right. mean they drop it and they can say stream this and stream that and you know but are they supporting it because that was the only way you would know if they was really tuned in right i mean the streams for one for one let's 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 not downplay what we're dealing with right now because what we're dealing with right now is definitely a great situation for the fact that no matter what evolution has to occur you know we have to evolve okay i'm not saying let's go back to the days of 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 melly mel and you know the days of the sugar hill gang and and you know have to spit like that or or appear like that but what i'm saying is we have the tools and the accessibility right now to uh show forth put forth more music than what five records that we're hearing on the radio you know what i'm saying so there's a big pool out there and it's just a matter of where your head is you know what i'm saying there's 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 opportunity, there's there's accessibility, there's a lot of great rap out there, there's a lot of great music out there, but for some reason, you know, nowadays we're still caught up in what is really, really going on or what's really, really being presented to us. And like I said, the same five records on, on a scale every day 
you know, that's not that's not healthy at all, actually. You know, that's a that's just brainwashing. And that being said, you know, a, a lot of us who do have some sort of, uh, you know, power or, you know, some sort of say, I think a lot of us need to step up and, and actually hone in and 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 make sure that we make accessible all the good rap that is still around, you know? I mean, they put us, well, a lot of us, they put a lot of us and a lot of music in a box and they want to call it underground. They want to call it overground. They want to call it commercial. Well, guess what? The, the underground is not uh, being fed to the people. You know, when I say the people, I'm talking about the masses. I'm talking about, you know, the everyday people listening to the radio. That's that's a wash, you know. So now we're really, really stuck with the commercial and the commercial isn't even hip hop no more. You don't know what to categorize it as because it's a bunch of sing songs. Uh, you know, you'll get a maybe one verse, a whole bunch of singing, and then a whole repetition of 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 chorus. You know what I mean? There's more chorus than lyrics in the records nowadays. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. So this whole thing is, you know, it took a turn. But as far as the culture is concerned, I don't think it was the best turn. But as far as technology and accessibility, okay, that's available. Now what we need to do is apply that to the authentic, you know, sound that we know as hip hop. Yeah. I mean, you, you nailing it right now, period. Um, I know for a fact that we've been listening to the same track for like maybe 12 years. I'm going to say about 12. And I know that a lot of, you know, when I talk to people, everybody's trying to push their product out there. You know, if you're an independent artist or whatever, but it's like they have to come up with a system where now it should be, it should be a voting system or something. Mm -hmm. it, it, you should be voted in at this point because nobody's really buying it. So how the, to me, if you're not buying it, it does that mean it's worth something? You know, it, it's that's that's a hard thing to do because you come from an era where people had to go out and buy it. And remember, y'all singles back then on vinyl, I know mm -hmm. they, they was eight eight dollars if you caught them like right, right from the rip. Mm -hmm. You know, five ninety nine. I'm a vinyl guy, so I know about you know how I went out and I actually what anticipated to you know buy your music. It meant it meant the whole lot at that point in time because it was not only just the music, it was actually the package, the packaging, you know, holding holding a a, a public enemy cassette tape in your hand, you know what I mean? And then ripping off the plastic, opening it up. You know, and looking at the credits, reading, you know, sometimes they would even put in there just a little detailed history. You know what I mean? That it meant a lot to people. You know, that that was a connoisseur's dream. You know, if, if you love to correct, uh, collect uh, CDs and tapes and vinyl, you know, that was the fun part of it. You know, and. Um, yeah, all this streaming, downloading, you know, we don't get to participate in that anymore. But like I said, it is evolution. So, you know, I guess you got your library where you store all your downloads and, you know, all your, yeah. you know, and um, that's what it is now. And, you know, like I said, I can't hate on it. It's just and nobody's hating. No, nobody's uh, hating. Mm -hmm. But now check this out. We're going to pump it up for the ones that is out. Mm -hmm. Which top five do you like right now in the industry? And I know you like some of them. Yeah, they all start with little something. Now nah, I'm lying. <laughs> 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 um, there's, there's, yo, I ain't even gonna kid you not. I'm, I'm, I'm a different kind of dude. Like, whether I like it or not, you know, I'll listen. You know, but I walk away with. Truthfully, not knowing who the artist is, you know, I I think my underclassmen 
are the last names that I really, really, really know. You know, unless you bring a name up. Okay, that, that's, that's what we're going to do. We so gonna, I'll go. Gonna go there. We're going to go with your top five male, top five female in your career. Okay, there you go. So that that right there is a whole different story. So my top five, which is, you know, it's always the same. It might vary here or there, but my top five male. No particular order. I got you. Yeah, you got Rock Kim. Rock Kim. The God is crazy. Um, you got KRS One. Hey, oh, here we go. KRS One. Um, Buster is one of my favorites. Buster Rhymes. Yeah. Of course. Leaders of um, the new school. He go. Yeah, no them. doubt. Um, we we actually we used to tour with them a whole lot. So you know, he's definitely become one of my favorites. The scenario that um, they killed that record. <laughs> oh, did they? Um, you know, then you got. You know, I like J. Cole. J. Cole. Uh oh, here we go. Yeah. We, 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 we coming back. We I like J. Back. Cole. Like I said, he's one of my underclassmen. He's right after me. You know what I mean? That I could still stay uh yeah. connected to a little bit of the younger and you know, and you know where I stand at. Well, um, J. Cole is a bit he's vintage, he's he studied y'all. Right, exactly. You know he what studied, I mean? They know he's getting around that. He studied nah. that. I know the ones who studied us, you know, like even when Kanye first came out, you know, he he publicly declared it. He declared it a couple of times, you know, uh, talking about UMCs. Uh, you know, when we spoke, he he said how who influenced him as a producer. Um, so, yeah, those those dudes right there along those levels. All right, here come the women. Here come the women. Here come the women. I got a head. No, let me throw let me throw Biggie in there too because Biggie. he really was phenomenal. G, put some respect on the Biggie. Biggie was phenomenal. P. Um, Diddy. He really, I, I like his approach to the game when he came out because he wasn't, you know, he he was just down to earth. He said everything that we all wanted to say, you know what I mean? But he said it in such a fashionable, you know, classy way. Um, it couldn't be denied, you know. I'm talking about from the gangsters. The, the 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 females, you know, the hardest of the hard, you know what I'm saying? All love Biggie. Uh, he's definitely one of my top. Biggie goes down. I mean, think about it. I just can't see you not saying him being in the top three. Um. Well, remember, you said no particular order. No, no, I'm just saying he would. Oh, you're saying in general. Yeah, yeah. He in has general, to be. he's top three, period. Yeah. Because it's some um, it's some monsters up there to say who's number one. Now, nah, Biggie was a game changer. Um, he definitely came and changed the game. His style of of, of rap was ridiculous. Um, so yeah, he 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 is up there, you know. But you know, rap is so diverse, and there's there's a lot of different styles out there. So I think you know, a lot of the people that we do know who were. Uh, fortunate enough to to come and shine some light, their style was it in its own way. You know what I'm saying? All of them, I give yeah. you know, I give flowers to. You know, they made marks and they did their thing. I'm not gonna lie. Back then, once again, I'm a I'm a big vinyl guy. Right, and man. You know, my man Thurl D. We used to be the tag team around the way. So, um. I, I, I have to say Biggie and Pac is top three. I just got to say that. Mm. You know, um, and I'm quite sure not many people would, wouldn't agree with that, you know, but now number one would be different. <laughs> now that, that number one spot, that could be very interesting. Who would hip hop really say is the greatest of all time? I mean, you got to think about it. Who would Hollywood say is the greatest actor of all time? You know, there's a time and a place and a season for everybody. You know, there cannot be one greatest of all time. I That never computed, you know what I mean, for me. I just know that there are different, you know, personalities who are great for their time. You know what I mean? For that time. Because right after that time is gone, there's another great one coming. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. you can't 
There's no greatest of all time. We'll never know who the greatest of all time is as long as time is still going. I would, but I would be interested if they would ever put like something together like that for hip hop, right? Mm -hmm. And they actually really do do votes on it. I wonder what certain people would pick because, you know, I check the internet a lot. I hear people say, um, Jay Z. I say, I hear people say Nas. I hear so many different people, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and, you know, I, I, like I said, I'm a big hip hop guy. Right. That's what I was playing at first. Right. You know, that's how we really got the parties jumping. Because right. Everybody wanted to play R&B at the time. Right. So we were one of the ones that went against the grain at the time and did hip hop in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of bars and stuff really didn't want that stuff in there. Mm -hmm. You remember that, right? They of course, that. that was that was the the that was the music that was anti. Nobody wanted to hear that stuff. You know what I mean? It was called that stuff. Actually, what is that stuff? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're but right. like I said, this is evolution, and that's what happens. Music changes drastically over years. You know, <laughs> tomorrow we don't know what it's going to be. But back to your back to um, let's get them females greatest. Who's the greatest of all time? Oh, greatest you know, we, all time. We, we vote presidents in. We vote presidents in. And guess what? Not all the people love the president. You understand what I'm saying? So the, what? Just because he got voted in means he's the greatest? No. Just because you vote that rapper in means they're the greatest? Nah. You know, that that's streaming along the lines of politics. Like I said, you'll never know who the greatest is. All I know is there's a great one for their time. And you know what I mean? And, and that's, the best way generation. To look at it, you know? that's the best way to look at it. Yeah. That's just like when they say uh, Michael Jordan, LeBron, you know, two different eras. We will never know if they would have ever went against each other. Both dominant in their eras, both dominated for the times. Right. So, you know, all those names we made basically dominated. Yep. So. You know, all right, who's your top two West Coast rappers? Ha. Here we go. West side. My 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 West Side has to really be one one that you know I really, really I loved because when we went out to Cali, we um we actually brought their we brought their CD back to New York before it even came out. And that was Be Real from Cypress Hill. See, I'm going, I'm going from there. Wait a minute, you talking yeah. about oh, okay, Cypress Hill. Yeah, Yo, they had hits. Yeah, they really did. Cypress they really Hill. Did. Yeah, but I see, it was it was big for me. I could, just kill a man. I could just kill a man. It's all it, it was just the style that he came with. That was such mm -hmm. a style that was nobody, nobody was rocking like that. You know what I'm saying. And no, of course, no. you got Snoop. You know, Snoop is the granddaddy of the West Coast. You know? y'all call, call him Uncle Snoop. Yeah, you call him Uncle, Grandpa, Uncle Godfather, or whatever. Yeah, Uncle Snoop. But yeah, um, I'm, I'm a big Snoop Snoop Dogg fan, man. Since Dog Pound, and once again, I'm gonna say it again. I got the vinyl. Yeah. So yeah. I'm a vinyl guy. I mean, Exhibit Exhibit was sick, too. You know what I mean? Yeah, hey, he still is, actually. Yeah, you know, he, he had the hardcore voice, you know? Yeah, sick. But, uh, you know, like I said, there's a lot of rappers that are out right now, and I can't, you know, for the life of me, distinguish who's who. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, there's a whole bunch of littles out there. Little this, little that. Young this, young that. You know, so I I, I really tend to stay in my lane. You know, I like all music. I give all music a chance. But hold, um, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. You're not going to say old no more. We're going to say vintage. Because I, when you say, when you keep saying old, you know what old really mean is done. So well, we're going to say vintage. Nah, I, 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 I really, I think you uh, misheard me. All, I, hit, I like all music. Not mm. old. I like all music. Um, All music. Okay. Yeah. I, now. So I open my ears to all music. You know, and I think for the fact that I'm so vested in a lot of my own work right now and my own projects, you know, I probably got on a, 
a little bit of the blinders on. You know what I'm saying? This way I don't find myself, you know, replicating something that's there already or or what the norm is now. And, you know, I always strive to be inventive and new and, you know, different from from the masses, you know. So that's you that's know, it's like to hear it from older rappers that legit to me i keep saying it y'all guys back in the 90s and way back early 2000 people physically bought your material mm -hmm. so um that's i just ask because i know y'all was in the era where y'all saw a lot of those top rappers that they banging at these, these throwback uh parties uh dougie fresh and all of them you know Mm -hmm. still out there doing shows too right definitely because there's this i mean you grow and guess what your fans grow too you know <laughs> so i don't think a lot of the fans from back then are so caught up on the music of today they sometimes people like to reflect and and go back to their nostalgia you know yeah. and, and even nowadays i see them mixing some of the older groups with the new groups as well you know it's there's a there's a little blend going on here and there, but there's still there's still room for the older groups because you know the massive grew they up. Fans. They got fans. They got fans. They all grew up too, you know, and and that's what they like to hear. Um, yeah, you're right about that, you know. Mm -hmm. And and this let's just be real. A lot of them don't listen to the current rap music. They exactly. might like one or two songs or whatever. Um, but other than that, you know, they pretty much stay in their lane of whatever era they came from. I mean, it's it's a difference when you're going out to the club and that's the music that's getting you to move. But when you're sitting in your crib, you know what I mean, or in your element and you want to listen to some stuff, most of the times, you know, that that era of people, those generations, they tend to go back to what they what they grew up off of. And you know what I mean? That's what it is. But like I said, when you're going out, you do what the you, you do when in Rome, do as the Romans. That's they, that's how they say it. You know, you do what's going on. You know, you enjoy yourself. You have a few drinks, you dance it off, keep it moving. And that's what it is. But you can tell in y'all era that y'all didn't do that. Y'all was looking for distinctive, different sounds, mm -hmm. different melodies and rap. Y'all wasn't doing that. Y'all was literally doing different songs distinctively they was none of them was the same i mean even today there are some that are different but for whatever reasons the machine steadily puts out the ones that continuously sound the same and that that's a business ploy you know that's just that's just a matter of well if this worked let's do another one like that if that yeah. works let's do another one like that Let's find an artist who looks like this. Let's find an artist who sounds like that, which they was doing that a long time ago, too, as well. You know, yeah. artists would come out and, and and you know, by the time the media gets them hyped up and, and get them out there to the world, whoever the next artist is, they come out actually looking and sounding like them as well. But like I said, you know, carpet copies are no good. You know, the original is the only one that's going to stand the test of time. The carpet copy you know what we do with that we we fold it up crunch it up and you know take a shot with it you know what i'm saying exactly. but, um, so even even now there's there's a bunch of artists that are out there that are you know they have a very very distinct floor a whole very distinct manner but you know it's it's hard to come by sometimes you know if we're so jaded and caught up on on what's being force fed you know we're never going to look beyond you know, we're just going to settle for what we're being fed. Absolutely. And like I said, I guarantee you, if they came up with the buy system again, mm -hmm. I think we'll find the songs that we would like. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you shut down all of this, all this, this Internet, which is never going to happen, and you have to go out there and search for your records, one, you're going to you're going to search, you're going to look. And two, you're going to be cautious on what you spend your money on now. You know what I mean? So but there you so go. Your collection is going to be, you know, really, really meaningful, you know, to mm -hmm. say. Nowadays, a push of a button, you stream a record, 
it, it don't even matter. You like it, you don't like it. It goes to the side. You never listen to it again. You know what I mean? But you got access to so much of everything. So, yeah. You know. everything. What about the women? We got to show the women some love. Oh, man. My, my, you know, you, you, you know how it was. Nowadays, there's more women, but back in the day, it, it was a limited amount. But, you know, you always got to start with the first queens, which was, um, I got to well, hear his name. The first, the first queens in my, in my time. There was a couple of queens before that, but I really started off loving, um, salt and pepper. Oh, my goodness. Salt and pepper. Definitely. Um, um, when it came to being real fly and, and street and, you know, hard, but still sexy, it was MC Light for me. MC Light. Light is um, a lot. Yeah, she she was the, she was, she was Georgie, doing that thing. I remember that. Dude, oh, I yeah, you know. Vinyl. I got the vinyl. I, I, look, it's just rolling off my head when, when you say it. Okay. I mean, her, her joint is when she came out with Paper Thin. Paper? Oh, my goodness. She used that. She used that James Brown drum um, situation. I mean, I, that, that drove me crazy. I was on it from that point on. Um, and, of course, you got the one who's still reigning, you know what I mean, in movies, Hollywood right now, Queen Latifah. Queen? So, of course. You know. Line hey. Jeffy. See, you know what? Her and LL basically, it's pretty close on what time they came out, right? Yeah, definitely. Because I um, think... 82, 83, because she came out with Ladies First and with Moni Love and all that kind of stuff. I remember yeah. that stuff, man. I got the vinyl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you could show and prove. Yeah, we got you the vinyl, man. Yeah. Um, my, my West Home girl, Yo Yo. Yo Yo, you can't play with the Yo yeah. Yo. I thought she was phenomenal when she came out because she was, you know, she came out with she came out with class. That's one. But her backing, her crew, her team, you know what I'm saying? She was rolling with the big dogs. So, you know, she got co-signed off the rip. Yeah, and, uh, Cube, right? Cube, yeah. yeah so Cube. she was co-signed from the beginning. And, and, you know, Ice Cube was very, very outstanding in his time as well. As oh, yeah, it's NWA. All day. So, you know, yeah, I, lo I love you know, I love. You know, like, uh, you, know what, you know the one song I like with Ice Cube? Wicked. Oh, get 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 wicked wick. Yeah, he was man. Weird. That video <laughs> was electrified at the time, man. You gotta remember when Ice Cube started shedding himself from you know the whole NWA thing, he would definitely you know take a loving, a liking to the East Coast sound as well. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you um you could tell that's how he started developing that. Those type of flows, you know? And, um, yeah, we, we liked Ice Cube a lot over on this side. And uh, let's not... We got to put some... Risk. If you like Ice Cube, it's got to be Dr. Dre somewhere in there. With oh, them, well, with now you're getting, into, you're getting into my class of, of yeah, you yeah. know, producers. You know what I'm saying? Now, yeah. now that's... Yeah. Dre Dre's a... See, I'm not going to say the, the, the best producer ever in the world because you can't say that. For his time, Dre was a seriously, is a seriously dope, dope producer. You understand oh, what I'm saying? A lot of records. A lot of oh, records. Oh, a lot of records. But then you got Quincy Jones. But that ain't hip-hop. But don't wait, he still fall into the category of one of the greatest producers of all okay, time? So now you're going into <laughs> R&B. I'm just going into music, brother. Music. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So there you go. We didn't say greatest hip-hop producer. Greatest oh, producer of all time. Okay, now I know you you will trick it up and twist there it. There you go. There you go. Okay, I got you. You know, um one of the um MCs out of Philly that I did like during that era, believe it or not, uh I believe it's Bahamadia. Oh, okay, I remember, I remember her. Yeah. She, yo, she was put She in, was nice. She, she was, was nice. Definitely nice. Yeah. She was nice for the for that time and um the down south guys, give me your top three down south. Here we go. You want to know the truth? Uh oh, here we go. We weren't even listening to the south then. No, it wasn't. Mean, but it but didn't, it really didn't. I didn't feel it then. I know me personally, I didn't feel it. 
the I think the first time I really felt somebody from the South was when Two Live Crew came out. Uh oh. Um, Uncle Luke. I want to say Trick Daddy. Trick Daddy. Yeah. Luke kicked it off, though. I do do believe, right? Or was it um Too Short? Well, Too Short is from the West Coast. Oh, okay. well, that's right. He's, he's Oakland. Okay. Um. Okay. So, which okay. which brings me to, I'm trying to f remember if um Ghetto Boys was no, they were Texas. So that's when I started branching off to different types of music, like Ghetto Boys. They Texas. You know what I mean? Um, Luke. Trick Daddy. Um, yeah, I wasn't really into the South. My whole thing was West Coast and East Coast, yeah. you know, at that time. And then every once in a while, you know, we'll get um, Outkast, you know, oh, yeah. they ATL. Go, so yeah. I guess that's South, right? No, oh, that's definitely Atlanta. Yeah. So, yeah. They so, were unique, too. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very. Um, Goody Mob, all of them. Yeah, they hold... Their whole dungeon family was was tough. You know what I'm saying? They remind me of a, a, a South New Yorkers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like they reminded me of us out here, but they was out there doing what they did. No, oh, no, I mean, they I mean, once they got in, uh, they started cranking it up. I mean, Master P, um, he did well. A uh, baby came in after that. Um, right. I mean, they all did really well when they cranked it up. Uh, like you said, I, and I do believe Jay Prince, he had, uh, what was the name of the uh, rap? Ghetto Boys, right? Uh, Jay Prince? I'm not sure. Was he one of the Ghetto Boys? No, 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 no. He was the yeah. CEO. He's the CEO guy. I'm, I'm talking about the group. I just know that he had one of... He was, oh, yeah, he was involved with the group. Yeah, he right. was from Houston. Right. So, I know his group did well. Right. You know, so... You know he had a he had a run to that star face and all them. Right. Yeah. So you know, That's I know the ghetto boys. Yeah. The ghetto boys. Yeah. Yeah. Bushwick Bill. Bill. Rest yeah. in rest in peace. Rest in peace. All yeah. right. So um. That's that's you know. I got a lot of good information from that. That's the yeah. That's the summary for you know from the 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 mid eighties all the way up until you know what I mean. We're now we getting into now. And it's now is this is what we deal with right here and now. So, you know, what, what's what will you tell me? What's the climate like out there? How about that? <laughs> what, where? what do you listen to? For me, um, my top five. What, what were you talking about? Down south? No, right now. What are you listening to on the radio where you at right now? What are you feeling right now? What, 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 I, what I do listen? I listen to Drake. Mm hmm. I like Drake. I like Lil Baby. I do like him. I do like him out of the new the new bunch. Uh Drake been around for about eight, nine years though, right? Yeah. He's uh, still I still consider Drake, you know, of this lineage new. You know what I mean? Still yeah, fresh. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, Very fresh. And he still got he Drake still got a, a long path to continue. You know what I mean? I don't he's not yeah. finished at all. He's still he he's very, very, you know, articulate. Yeah. You know, he has a real, real good appeal to the crowd, to the to the ladies. You know, I mean, there's these dudes that love him. He puts it out and it does well. No. <laughs> you know, and he's very, he, you know, he's inventive. You know, he yeah. Drake's records don't come out sounding the same all the time. No. So I give him that, you know, and he's very, very creative. So rather, I, that's what I really appreciate. Like, whether people like him or not, he is very successful. Yeah. And um, he he has hits too. Oh, he, of course. That's yeah. yeah that's yeah, that's why he's talked about. Yeah, so. but that's what I was talking about earlier. You know, um, you know, there are some that really do got hits. Mm -hmm. you know, so he's one of them. He's yeah, one of them. I like J Cole too. Mm -hmm. um, but if you notice, we're talking about people that kind of study y'all era. Right. Right. So that goes to show you. The apple ain't gonna fall too, too um, uh, fall short. From the tree. Tree. Yeah, yeah, it's not. You know, well, so. those make for that's the that goes without saying in any profession. 
and mm -hmm. anything. You know, when you study the 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 best errors and you learn from that, you know what I mean, and and you figure out how to perfect it, you know, genuinely, yeah. you're going to win. There's no way you're not going to win. You know what I mean? As mm -hmm. opposed to just sprouting out of nowhere and thinking that you know it all and coming with something that just has no foundation to it or no roots to it, you know? You know, there was always a saying, you got to know where you come from in order to know where you're going. And that's just the truth, you know, in any, anything. Yeah, you're right about that. Have you been checking out the verses? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Which one did you really enjoy? Oh, come on. Hands down, Jada and um, the locks and um, Dipset. Come on. Dipset, I'll figure that. Yeah, yeah that, that, was that one right there had a lot of. You know, people talked about that one. I mean, everyone prior to that, to me, were all experiments to get it right. You know, all right, we got to go this one. All right. Yeah, that one's cool, but we could work it out a little bit more. What are we going to do to make it appeal a little bit more? Mm -hmm. All right. Do this. I'm glad you said that because Babyface and our, um, Teddy Riley definitely. Oh, that was horrible. <laughs> yeah, that was the, that was historically terrible. <laughs> I mean, you, they had to work out the kinks. You know what I'm saying? The first the first one always gets shot down. First one don't necessarily, you know, live a long life. You know what I'm guess saying? What? It lived up to that billing. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. And guess what? That was the first of it all. So, you know, it still made history. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, it was a great it. It's two great people going at it, though. You know, their accolades are there. I mean, that ain't even no question. Technical um, difficulties stood in the way. Come on. Yeah, yeah, technical difficulties was in the way, but I just wish they would have held that one back and kind of did it now because I think it would have been incredible. Well, you got to think about it. You know, there's sacrifices in, in any genre of life. You know, that, that was the sacrifice. In order to draw the people... We have to have the biggest names right now that, you know, will get this whole thing jump started. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Yeah. They could come back for a part two. And guess what? It'll now it'll be in Madison Square Garden. You know, Teddy Raleigh will have his keyboards. Babyface will have his piano. And they'll be face they, to face on to the same that. stage. You know what they I'm saying? To, they need to do that one over. If, if anyone, that was the one I always thought that they should bring that one back and actually do it over right right you know um and you know i think nobody should be too big to do it you know i'm starting to i, I check the internet and i see certain people don't want to do it and, and and it's really the thing is really a celebration it's not even a contest they telling you it's a it's a celebration so mm -hmm. you should want your music to be you know especially now because actually that that's actually bringing some pretty good energy to our music right now. Right. I mean, I know a lot of people who would love to be there, but you know, there are stipulations. You know what I mean? You have yeah, to have a, many hits. Uh, yeah, you have to have hits. You have to have a bunch of hits. You know, to qualify. Yeah. You know, not every not every rapper or singer, you know, could count five hits on their hand. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, right. they might just be good for like two or three hits, and that was it. So, yeah. you know, yeah. I want I would like to see Sean Paul go up there and get somebody. <laughs> Sean came out of nowhere, but you know, I don't know. They, 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 if they skip over a lot of the roots and culture reggae artists to get to Sean Paul first, and you know, that's. Nah, that ain't right. You know what I mean? There's there's a whole bunch of different artists that came before him that are ready. No, it might have been, but you best believe the internet gonna be on fire. Mm -hmm. See, I don't trust me. They want ratings too. This is about of course. so. I mean, you, that's what the whole thing is about. The yeah, you put him in there ratings. with one of them them hitters on on reggae. It'll be a battle. Don't worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> But you know, too, they um verses revived a lot of the energy in music. You know, it brought it, it brought it real, 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 you know, back. Well, like rather, it brought it present from a 
a place that was left in the back where there was no real competitiveness. Um, you know, there was no gatherings of the people, you know, uh, there was no, how could I say, uh, paying homage to the work of the artists, you know, and Versus did all of that, you know, it, it made us reminisce, it, it showed the, the competition, it showed the commodity as well, you know. It wasn't all a blood sport, you know, as as a lot of people thought it was going to be. It actually turned out to be something good, you know. You know, they came, they battled, they threw their hits out there. They gave the public a chance to to really, really go back and reminisce. And, you know, if they felt like dancing, get up and dance, celebrate. And then, you know, at the end of the battle, you know, truthfully, yeah, we called the winner. But there was really, really never a winner because all them songs that were played were loved you know, by people, uh, by the audiences. And, and then they walked off in, in the highest regards for each other, you know? So Versus was a great thing for the people. I wanted to play this song by, uh, it's by uh, Catherine Swain. I'm quite sure you did it, you know. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to play it, you know, before before we check out. Definitely. Wanted, all right, so we're going we gonna to let it go right now. Single right here, Catherine Swain. That's off the Phantom Music, uh, Sony Orchard label, uh, produced by myself. You know, Catherine's a, a, a nice up and coming young woman who, um, you know, we just got together. And we did the thing. And it's, it's, it sounds pretty good. I, I heard it. So I'm I appreciate it. Here we go. I've been here with you since the start. You play with my heart I need to know Why you're doing this to me We've been through some ups and some downs I've always been around for your love Can't you do the same for me? Every word I say, I need your love. I want you listen to me. Thank you. 
All right, yo, that joint is hot right there, man. Uh, thank you, I appreciate you. Yeah, it's something man. different, you know. Uh, it's a lot of people know me more or less for for a lot of um, a lot of hip hop, but um, this was just a no brainer. Um, she's phenomenal, you know, as an artist. You can sing. Yeah, we got a lot of work, you know what I mean, done. And, uh, you know, that's just one of my new focuses right now, Catherine Swain. Okay. Maybe I can maybe I can get an interview with I don't know. I just throw it in, <laughs> I'm going to throw it in there real fast. Yeah, it's, all right. Well, you put it out in the universe and it shall happen. There you go. That's all I ask. That's all I ask. <laughs> all right. So let's just put your information out there. We're going to close it out. Once again, it's Haas G. He on the SL Digital Media, MJ Connics. You know how we do it. You know how we do it. I hope everybody out there who was on, you know, caught a caught a few jewels. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. Um, and uh, you know, y'all could catch me at um, Phantom of the Beat on IG. That's Phantom with a F F A N T O M O F T A T B E A T. That's uh, that's Instagram. On um, Facebook, you could catch me at um, Phantom of the Beat as well. Um, Phantom Music. F A N T O M U S I C. Uh, and other than that, you know, you just Google, you Google Haas G from the UMCs. You know, I never left that. I never left that title. You know, it just became AKA Phantom of the B E for the street. You know, that's the transition from rapper to, to producer. You know, a lot of people still have trouble, trouble with that because, you know, they didn't put, you know, this and that together and realize that Haas G is Phantom of the B. So, you know, go well, Google. If, if they look at this podcast, <laughs> I guess they'll find they'll, they'll figure it out now, right? Yeah, they're gonna figure it out because you just dropped it. Yeah, so you know what I mean? It was it was a pleasure. And yes, uh, sir. any anytime, you know what I mean? All I need is. that artist. I'm hitting Marissa up. We gotta make it All day. fire. All, All right, day. so that's it. Hosh G. Yes. UMCs. He's got yes. some songs. He did Magic Stick, 50 Cent, Lil' Kim. I got yes. Magic Stick. One of, one of my best hits. One of my best. That's a banger, though. It, that yeah. banger when it came out. And I you caught 50 it. when 50 was on fire. Very, very <laughs> much so. Yeah. Very much so. And that, that was a... Uh, but, you know, we was doing a lot of the mixtape work, too. Before yeah. he came. Yeah. A lot of his rap, Rotten Apple and we did some of the mixtape songs before. So, you know, we was in the mix a little before y'all was in, that. Y'all was in the blender. I hear it. Y'all yeah, was in the yeah. blender. All right. So that's it. It was a great interview. Hi, Thank Steve. you. It's iconic. You already know what it is. Anytime. Anytime. All right, now.